Maben's blast lifts Astros over Mariners in Verlander's team debut Perhaps it was fitting that in Justin Verlander's Astros debut, his former Detroit Tigers teammate was responsible for the biggest swing of the game Cameron Maben clubbed a go-ahead to run home run in the seventh inning to back Verlander's strong six innings in the Astros' 3-1 win against the Seattle Mariners on Tuesday night at Safeco Field. Not only did it break a tie, but Maben's no-doubter to left center field off Emilio Pagan marked the Astros' first hit and one of only two in the game. Verlander, who like Maven joined the Astros on Saturday after the late-night Thursday trade, allowed only one run on a Kyle Seager solo shot in the fourth. The former MVP and Cy Young Award winner struck out seven and issued only one walk. His final pitch was a 99-miles-per-hour hour fastball. With the victory, the Astros, 85-53 surpassed their 2016 win total with 24 games to play. They maintain a three-game lead over the streaking Cleveland Indians in the race for home field advantage in the American League. Verlander threw 103 pitches in his first start for a team aside from the Tigers, who selected him with the number two overall pick in the 2004 draft. In 2005, Detroit selected Maven with the 10th pick. Maben had two stints with the Tigers, the most recent of which came last season. The Astros acquired the speedy outfielder via a waiver claim from the Los Angeles Angels on Thursday. A laborious first inning limited the length of Verlander's outing. He expended 24 pitches to record his first three outs, 11 against a fellow star in Robinson Cano. Kano fouled off seven pitches in his at-bat, including six consecutive, before Verlander struck him out swinging on an 87 miles per hour slider in the dirt. Verlander struck out two more batters in a 16-pitch second inning. After working down in the zone on his first three pitches to Mitch Hanager, he changed Hanager's eye level with an elevated 96 miles per hour fastball on which the batter whiffed. After allowing a two-out double to Ben Gamble, Verlander caught Mike Zanino on a borderline 97 miles per hour fastball up and away for strike three. In the third, Verlander worked around two more two-out hits, well-placed singles by Yonder Alonso and Kano. He racked up two more strikeouts in the fourth, but not before he yielded his first run in an Astros uniform. On the eighth pitch of a battle with Seager, Verlander left a slider up and over the plate that the Mariners' left-handed hitting third baseman lifted high and into the right field seats. The homer, which tied the score at one, was Seager's third in 22 career at bats against Verlander. Verlander helped his pitch count with a 13-pitch fifth, his first 1-2-3 to two to three frame of the evening. For his final inning he was tasked with the heart of the Mariners' lineup, beginning with Kano. After jumping ahead, no balls to two strikes, he threw a 96 miles per hour fastball that Kano rocketed back at 103 miles per hour and off the pitcher's arm. Astros manager AJ Hinch and one of the team's head athletic trainers ambled out of the dugout to check on their new prized pitcher, who proved he was fine by firing a warm up pitch to catcher Brian McCann. Nelson Cruz followed with a single to put two runners on base with no outs. But Verlander worked out of trouble by inducing a 3-6-1 to double play turned with the help of the calmness of Yuli Gurriel and the rocket arm of Carlos Correa. Only Mitch Hanager stood in Verlander's way of finishing his final inning. Against Hanager, Verlander emptied the tank. His 99th, 100th and 101st pitches each registered 98 miles per hour. He missed just outside with a slider on the fourth pitch of the at-bat before unleashing a 99 miles per hour fastball down in the zone on pitch number 103. Hinch met Verlander at the dugout steps with a handshake, marking the end of the pitchers as advertised team debut.